Today we'll talk about kinetics of allosteric enzymes. Normal michaelis menten kinetics of enzymes gives us this very familiar hyperbolic curve when we plot velocity versus substrate concentration. If an enzyme is controlled by an allosteric factor, we see a sigmoidal shape to the curve when the plot when we plot velocity versus substrate concentration. So how does this graph get the sigmoidal shape? Well, that's a good question. We can think of it as this an adaptive response or an adaptive system or a system that is resistant to change. Uh, so this what the sigmoidal graph represents is a combination of two things. The first is the T state, which is just a linear line and is what we get if all the enzyme is in the tenth state or locked. The R state is much more hyperbolic in nature and very similar to what we have seen in our normal michaelis menten kinetics. The center, or the, the blue graph, is a combination of the two. A couple of different models of how the graph arrives at this uh, particular sigmoidal shape have been proposed. One is called sequential, the other is called concerted. They're very similar. Sequential just means that as a substrate binds, it changes the configuration of the quaternary structure of the neighboring subunits uh, so that they can bind substrate even easier. Concerted, the binding of the, the, the substrate affects the probability that the enzyme is in the T or R state. So they're both affecting the, the, the ability of substrate to sequentially bind. So this is kind of representation of what's happening. We have the T state represented by these squares and the R state or relaxed state is these circles. And as we bind more and more substrate, we'll notice that the equilibrium between them shifts. So in this upper left-hand corner, we can say that the T state is more strongly favored. In fact, the enzyme is probably 99% T and 1% R. As substrate binds, we get more and more uh, conversion to the R state. In this case, like in the middle here, it'd probably be 50-50 as far as the probability of it being in the R versus T state. And we go further along as more and more substrate binds, we see that we probably have 99% R when we're over on here and about 1% T. So what happens if we have an activator and inhibitor in this process? Well, if we add an inhibitor, we still have that sigmoidal shape, but it's shifted. It takes more substrate to achieve what we had previously done with our blue curve here. Okay, so as, as we add an, an inhibitor, we see that that sigmoidal is, is shifted, if you will, to the right. It takes more substrate to get what we had seen before. If we add an activator, we see a shift to more of a hyperbolic curve or very little resistance at the beginning. And we're more closely like our Michaelis-Menten kinetics that we've seen in the past. 